going on gang? Welcome to another session of uh, at the virus or whatever you want to call it. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, fishing some brown trout emerger patterns um, that happens this time of year. I know that uh, a lot of people think that that fishing the emerger, uh, brown trout emerger is definitely not ethical. However, every place is different and in our neck of the woods um, they're not native. So, you know, we look at a you know, we're as ethical as we can be on, 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 on fish reproduction and stuff like that, but we bugle elk in the winter and we, we rattle antlers and we cluck turkeys in the spring. So we also fish uh, brown trout emergers or egg patterns in the fall. So just gonna chat a little bit about egg patterns and a few of our favorites. Uh, first one we're gonna do is the classic um, glow bug or uh, McFly foam glow bug. We like fishing um, chartreuse, yellows uh, with a little bright spot on them this time of year in our neck of the woods. So we're just going to start with a 6 aught fluorescent orange um, waxed yarn, or wax thread, excuse me, and we've tied these on a 3x heavy uh, size 14 scud hook. And we're going to use just a little bit of our McFly lawn yarn in I think this is uh, maybe Oregon cheese anyway so we've got about an inch and a half section of this stuff um, not a ton of it maybe about a quarter of the width of it when you when you pull it out of the package and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna strap that right on top of the hook at about that two-thirds point we're not right up behind the eye we're not dead center of the hook and why we do that is we're just gonna do a loose wrap right in the center we're going to pull that tight and put a few more wraps right in there like a little bow tie and then we're going to take a little bit of can't remember this color either but it's an orange we're going to make our our yolk or our nucleus of our of our egg out of that and I'm just going to tie that in right on top so basically you've got a bow tie tied like so right in the center pull that tight and then we're going to pull everything up top like so and I like doing just some saddle wraps similar to what we would do with the clouser eye down around the base of this just to kind of bring all those fibers together in one spot and you can make these in any color you like like I said um, our favorite emerger uh, color here in the fall tends to be chartreuse and yellows um, with a little orange. So that's the color we're using today. Get a little whip in there. Now we'll see a lot of people um, tying eggs and putting tungsten beads and stuff like that in them. Um, from my experience, our experience here, um, these eggs have a lot of fat in them. They don't tend to set on the bottom like a, like a, like a nymph or like a larva would or a pupa or larva or, or nymph, they tend to bounce around so we'd rather almost wait our leader and we'll show you how to do that setup the way we do it here in just a few. Real simple bug once it's tied on there um, just gonna go ahead and do a cut across the top basically the diameter that I want of the egg and pull those fibers down around the bottom and we end up with pretty decent representation of a, a brown trout emerger right there nice little size 14 so that's a good standby fly works great for what we're doing um, but we also uh, tie a few different ones that we probably like a little bit better um, second fly we're going to tie is a modification of the nuke egg which I believe is a Great Lakes uh, steelhead brown trout fly I think that's where it was developed I think Kelly, uh, I think Gallup might have showed me this for the first time. Um, we do this one with a glass bead for, for the nucleus of the egg. Um, works out pretty good. So I've just got that glass bead on that same size 14 3X heavy scud hook and the same thread. And I'm just going to build a little base in that same two -third, um, front two thirds of the hook, like so. Then I'll go ahead and just slide this bead back and I'll get a wrap around the bead 
and in front and I'll do that you know maybe a half a dozen times just to make sure that Shakira is in the house and we secure our bead. This bead's going to sit underneath and be the uh, nucleus. Really cool fly pattern, um, super simple to tie and once it's wet really looks like a hollow egg uh, and it has the right the right consistency to kind of get down there and, um, and bounce around like we like it. So what I'm going to do is I'll just take a smaller piece, maybe an eighth of that McFly lawn that comes in the clump um, and about an inch and a half long. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and put it right on the side of the hook on my side in front of the bead and I'm going to do a loose wrap and pull it tight like so and then I'll take the other side and I'll pull the eyelet the eye of the hook through and then we'll just do a little secure action on that like so like I said these ones tie really fast and really look like a really nice they're a nice emerger pattern if you will whip finish our head off and I don't try to make these things perfect because you definitely tend to go through a few now what I'll do is I'll just trim both sides of that McFly lawn even a little bit short of the back of the hook when this fly gets wet all that McFly lawn envelops and sticks in the back over that um, glass bead and makes a really good looking egg really quick uh, one more that we'd like to tie that's even quicker and easier is with some new stuff that we've been playing with uh, our version at Snake River Fly of the uh, what's the stuff called row yarn UV row yarn we have some yoke yarn um, just got some phrase in that thread I'll get rid of it we have a little product in four or five colors, nice pastels um, that's really similar to the UV yarn. Um, this one is in kind of that pale egg yolk color. That's the color we like from the fall. And I just have like uh, four or five inches of that material. And the same thing, I built up a little orange thread base in that front third of the hook. And I'm just going to tie that yoke yarn on, build a good thread base. That thread base in orange is going to become the nucleus. When this gets wet, it'll shine through. And now we're just going to take and uh, give ourselves, I don't know, half dozen wraps of this yoke yarn. Really, this stuff really works well for like a row. If you're trying to tie like a um, you know sucker row or something like that you can definitely lengthen this out on a bigger hook if you want let's go ahead and secure that yarn off give her a few good tight wraps whoa we got a little jump going in there buy myself a little room and we'll give her a little whip finish here like I said we want these to tie quick well, it's fortunate that they do, but um, yeah, you might go through quite a few of these this time of year. And in the spring as well. We'll just clip that yarn. And what we're going to do with this is the same thing. We're just going to take and pull it up like we did on our McFly lawn. Cut it all about the same length. And it doesn't look super pretty um, right there, but, you know, once you get a little liquid going on this thing they tend to get pretty gooed out and start forming that little ball on the inside you're gonna see you know that orange coming out of that guy and uh, I'll go ahead and show you how we rig these up and how we fish these emergers but uh, there's three of them for your for your arsenal that hopefully will get you into uh, fishing some of these bugs this time of year just talking a little bit about how we're going to fish, um, you know, these baby brown trout emergers or uh, fish eggs. Yeah, and typically, remember, we're also, you know, we're fishing to the species that are following these hatches or these uh, spawns up. 
and um, you know fishing those fish that are downstream down below so typically getting a fly down fast or getting those those flies down into the zone um, either gonna have to go with the super long leader you know and the general rule is you know double what the depth is so if you think you're fishing two feet um, you know you go with four or five feet and then your indicator well versus um, you know having to do all that sink all that get that to sink before it gets to the fish because um, typically you're going to cast upstream and across. We like using the vertical rig. Um, we've talked about this before, but essentially it's a four to six foot section of heavy mono with a loop knot tied to a thingamabobber, bobber, regardless of your whatever size you want. This gives it some nice movement. It's not in line and getting drug around, and it allows us to get a smaller diameter tippet um, or leader material down to our flies and we don't have to sink that big heavy section and typically if we're fishing four feet with that setup um, we'll set up four feet or, or even three and a half feet um, because once again it's sinking a lot faster and a lot more sensitive connection and how we did that sensitive connection is instead of tying onto the ring of the thingamabobber which would put this in line which is actually pretty effective um, and, and, and pretty subtle takes you can detect doing that but we're going to let this be free and we're going to come at a 45 once again with um, our fisherman's knot you know whatever one you do uh, five twists a lot of times for me and back through works pretty good it's going to butt up against this loop knot here which is smooth and butted and it's going to give us that 45 degree angle or excuse me 90 degree angle Math was never my, my strong suit. And um, we're going to get those flies down a lot faster. And, and so what we like to do typically is we'll fish a two fly setup um, when we're fishing. And I'll go eye to eye. So I guess if we call them this our, you know, maybe this is our glow bug um, on the eyelet right there. Maybe a little orange or red dot in that thing. That would be our glow bug going down, you know, three to four feet or getting close to, to what we think the depth is. And then either way, you could either tie off the bend on this to your next fly, or I like to, if I'm using anything smaller than a 12, I'll go eye to eye. We'll show you how to do that later. Um, with our next bug, let's say maybe we've got a new gig, you know, down here. And I'll usually go one, two X if the water's murky and it's heavy, and then you know go down to a three or four X. Um, adjust it how you like. This could be three X or four X. This could be four X, five X. Um, however, get your little hook in here, and we'll come off. You know, if just your fisherman's not here, you know, typically I like to go about 12 inches between the two. Any longer, you start getting a lot of whipping and whirling. Um, any shorter, it makes it a little tough for the way I tie my knots. And then if you wanted to also in three year, you know, a slide egg on here doesn't hurt at all. I mean, if you're gonna do it, do it, right? And uh, if you're wanting that to get down even quicker, you know, a split shot on here will work great. You know, we'll do this, the depth of water uh, down to that first, you know, to that fly setup, like so. So, um, if this is four feet, we're going to rig this four feet or three and a half feet. Um, saves on a lot of tippets, a lot more sensitive. You're going to get a lot more movement on this indicator. Typically easier to cast as well in the wind, but um, that's how we like to run our uh, our baby brown trout emerger setup for fall fishing and also spring fishing, anything you want to get a bug down quick. Um, we have them on the site, uh, the stuff to tie the bugs, tip it, I'm sure we got all that good stuff, but uh, thanks again. Mm.